everyone welcome to the next video of our time series uh, and in this uh, video uh, we'll look uh, at box clocks transformation and uh, differentiation in a time series now having said that uh, we saw that if uh, if we if we conclude that our time series is not stationary and if we have to make it uh, stationary you have couple of uh, option one is differencing um, the time series of of the first degree or the second degree or the third degree and uh, another thing we i told you that i'll be explaining is uh, the box cox transformation so have a uh, let's look at uh, the box cox uh, transformation then uh, so the first thing is that the box cox transformation is a power function family it belongs to a series of transformation within the power function and it basically transforms non uh, non uh, normal dependent variables into normal dependent variables so recall uh, i hope all of you recall dependent and independent uh, variables very basic but let's just do a quick uh, recap y is equal to mx plus c if that's the equation so your uh, uh, your dependent uh, variable is y and your independent variable is x because the value of y depends on x that's why um, y is a dependent variable okay so a box clock transformation is a power family uh, transformation which transforms non normal de uh, dependent values into normal values okay so that's the ideal context of a box clock uh, transformation function the formula um, is uh, given here so the formula changes on two ca cases where there is a lambda value and the lambda value ranges uh, from um, uh, 0 to uh, 5 uh, sorry the lambda value uh, ranges from uh, minus 5 to positive 5 which you can see here and uh, the function is defined in two cases of lambda which is when lambda is equal to 0 and lambda is not equal to 0 so what is the formula uh, y to the power lambda is defined when lambda is equal to 0 as log of y so you, when you when when you are inputting lambda is equal to 0 you would always have the the function will always convert it to the log of that value so when lambda is equal to 0 it will convert it to the log of that value so that is very simple to understand and when lambda is not equal to 1 you will have uh, y lambda minus 1 divided by lambda so that is the uh, formula you need to use and recall that you know your lambda can range between minus 5 to positive 5 okay so let's see some certain combinations let's start with the easier one when lambda is equal to 0 so when lambda is equal to 0 you would just input uh, the log of uh, the value so example when lambda is equal to 0 this is the case uh, my log of the value is that suppose i am taking <coughs> my value of yi uh, is equal to 1 uh, the value of i at the i iteration i need not i is equal to 1 2 3 okay so i am at this case when x is equal to 0 we need to do log of yi and i can have various values of yi right starting from 1 2 3 and so uh, log of 1 log of 2 log of 3 so this combination this part when lambda is equal to 0 will keep on giving you log values okay so it will be like a log transformation of the value you give one set of values it will return you the log transformation and um, how how is it helpful so if you have if you have if you look at uh, financial market analysis you will see that a uh, lot of people in stock market they use this uh, log transformation so they take a particular indices or a stock value and the first thing they will do is, is apply log transformation on the scale what it does is that <coughs> before log transformation you can have your x axis which are very close to each other and then uh, the graph is like this and after log transformation you can read it well the spacing becomes very wide okay and then instead of doing your analysis on this chart you actually do your analysis on this chart so this is what log transformation uh, does on the scale it widens uh, the x axis scale um, I'll put a picture uh, uh, in the description um, and you can see uh, what what I really uh, what I meant okay so back to uh, the other uh, combination the other combination uh, was when uh, the other combination is when lambda is not equal to 0 recall friends lambda value ranges from minus 5 to 
positive 5. Okay. Now here lambda is not equal to 0. So I will take uh, values from 1 to 6 and give you the numbers. So when um, lambda um, is not, not equal to 0, uh, the, fu uh, the function um, would work um, something like this. So you have, um, I have taken lambda is equal to 0.5 in the first case. So y to the power 0.5 minus 1 divided by 0.5 because the function is y a lambda minus 1 divided by lambda and I have taken lambda as uh, 0.5 as you can see and uh, if I take lambda as uh, 0.5 and I take y i is equal to 1 so here y y is equal to 1 and lambda is equal to 0.5 so in all the all the five steps I will show you know, I have taken lambda is equal to 0.5 I am changing the y values. So it is 1 to the power 0 0.5 minus 1 divided by uh, this becomes this part is 0 and hence this value is 0. In the second combination which is this one here also lambda is equal to 0 0.5 but I am changing y to 2. So if I am changing y to 2 you see it becomes 2 to the power 0 0.5. Why 0 0.5? Because lambda is I am keep on taking as 0 0.5 minus 1 divided by 0 0.5 it is 8 to 8. Similarly when I take yi is equal to 3 and lambda is equal to 0 0.5 again I see this combination which is 3 to the power 0 0.5 minus 1 divided by 0 0.5 you get 1.4 okay. I keep on doing it and if, if you keep on doing it for 4, 5, 6 you will see that the values that are coming is approximately uh, the square root uh, value uh, of yi. Example you are getting 2.47 that is approximately equal to the square root of 5 and then you have, you have you, here yi is equal to 4 and the value you are getting is 2 that and that is actually square root of 4. Here also it is 3 and then the value is approximately equal to the square root of 3. So we can see that when I put uh, lambda is equal to 0 0.5 in a box cross transformation the output I am getting is almost equal to the um, square root uh, value of the input and as you can see here when lambda is equal to 0 0.5 we get a square root transform. Similarly when lambda is equal to I am not showing it but you can put in the values and check yourself when lambda is equal to minus 1 we get a inverse of the reciprocal transformation when lambda is equal to negative 0 0.5 we get a reciprocal square root uh, transform and when lambda is equal to uh, plus 1 nothing happens everything um, uh, there is no change nothing will happen when uh, lambda uh, is equal to 1 okay so these are the four combinations four cases that happens when lambda uh, is not equal to 0 and we have already seen that when lambda is equal to 0 uh, we have a uh, log transformation so I hope uh, this was clear to you because what it essentially does is that it helps in making a time series uh, uh, stationary okay so this is what a uh, box box transformation is all about and in your python you need to hyper uh, you have to uh, put uh, the lambda value and um, uh, based on the lambda value uh, in in the python api the output uh, comes okay then the let's move to the second uh, topic of our video that is differencing differencing so not friends it is not differentiation i am not talking about uh, dy by dx okay so this is not that so i am talking of differencing okay so imagine this is a time series okay and uh, the values um, of demand are like this which is given on the base demand value which you can see um, in this row and the values are <coughs> given here 75 80 88 98 111 you can imagine uh, this as some weight in tons um, of a commodity value uh, for every um, every quarter for example and then when you are doing so this is your base uh, time series the first column and then if you have to do the first order differentiation which means subtract it once from each other what you need to do you need to subtract um, 75 from 80 uh, in the first pass okay and you will get as 5 and then the second it sec second one with the third which is 88 minus 8 you will get 8 then again 98 from 88 you get 10 
and then again 111 from 98 you get 13. So these values which you are getting here is the first order differencing of the time series. Okay, note every time you do a differencing there is a data attrition uh, that happens the number of data points increases. Here how many data points was there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that has reduced to 1, 2, 3, 4. So your data point uh, decreases every time you do differencing. Now again you can do differencing which will then become the second order differencing which is 8, uh, 5 minus 8 will give you 3, uh, 8 minus 10 give you uh, 2, uh, 13 minus 10 will give you 3. So this becomes your second order differencing and again you see data attrition has happened. You lost 2 data points and again you can go and do your third order differencing. You will end with uh, minus 1 and 1 and again you will have data uh, data attrition. So this, all this are the first order, second order and third order uh, difference uh, time series which was like this and you do the first order or the second order you would end up with a stationary a stationary time series after differencing. So this is after after differencing. So the question is you can always ask that Anirban how do I decide that do I do a first order, second order or third order differencing. First you try the first order that is with experimentation. You first do the first order differencing, plot the graph, do your uh, ADF and KPSS test, uh, look at the p value and whether the p-value is in the what range of 0.05 and based on that you check whether it is stationary or not and then again apply your second order differencing. I do not recommend applying beyond the third order difference. You cannot go and do like fourth, fifth, you have to do something uh, something other uh, on that Okay, or maybe your time series is not uh, suitable for uh, forecasting. Okay, so I hope uh, this video was long, I will not uh, prolong it, it, has, it will become a very long video else. So thank you for watching and uh, do share, subscribe if you have liked the video. Any questions, comment and do uh, do, uh, do uh, check out the description section uh, for interesting uh, informations and updates. And I will catch up in the next video where we will look into a new uh, series of forecasting called as autoregressive uh, forecasting and we will look at um, uh, ARMA, ARIMA and SARIMA. We will look at five uh, forecasting uh, models based on the genre of autoregression. Thank you so much and I will catch up with you in the next video.